welcome back to Ojo Deco. It's been so long since we made a piece together because for the month of May I had several markets planned so I had to focus on that but now we're back in the studio with lots of new ideas. So for today we are going to be making a forest wall art piece and this is the inspiration for today's piece and I made this with a coaster mold so it's kind of small and I would love to have this design in a frame. So I found these wood plaques at Michael's and they are for resin. As you can see, there's a picture with some oceans in a different wood blank. And I did get these on clearance, so I'm not sure if they're still available. But the idea is we're going to try and sort of replicate this scene inside um, the small rectangle. So let's get started. First, we're going to spray paint the wood canvas black. It's best to do this outdoors with a mask because you really don't want to be breathing in the paint. I am using an old bed sheet to protect my surface. You can see the streaks from previous paint jobs. The paint that I have on hand is this Color Shot Black Tie Affair. First time using it, I just got this because it was on sale and others have said it was good. So let's give it a try and test out how it works. I'm just going around the sides mainly since we're going to resin the center anyways. When we're done spray painting, I left the canvas outside overnight to dry completely. I just did one coat and I'm not a professional spray painter or even an amateur spray painter, so let's see how this turns out. The resin that we're using for this project is Totable's High Performance Resin. This is their slow hardener version and we're going to mix in this measuring cup. This kit is the larger size, so it comes with a calibrated pump specifically for this resin. The pump helps a lot and it makes life so much easier. As you can see, my measuring cup is pretty beat up after some uses and you can't even clearly see the measurements anymore, but it's all good because we don't even need it. I did four pumps of each part A and part B for the first layer that we are going to do. Now that our resin is measured out, we will use a plastic mixing stick to mix the two parts completely. The resin pops off these sticks when cured so they are reusable. Mix the resin slow and steady. This is my mixing speed, but I speed it up in this video because we should be mixing for several minutes so this is just to save us some time. But be sure not to mix at the speed of this video or you will introduce a lot of marker bubbles into your mixture. Before the mixing is fully complete, I will add the pigment for the background color of this piece and then mix a little bit more. That is just to reduce a bit of the bubbles that comes with the mixing. We are using Imperial Emerald from Maypring and we don't need too much since there's already a darker color background. We'll finish up the mixing, then begin the pour. Again, I am speeding up the mixing to save us some time when you're mixing resin, pigment or not. Make sure to mix slow and steady. We're pretty much done with the resin mixing now, so let's set that aside for it to rest, and I will show you what we're working with today. This is the canvas board that we spray painted together earlier, the day before, I let it dry overnight, it looks pretty dark, a few spots that I missed, but I'm thinking about resonating the edges anyways, so it'll be okay. The back of the board got a tad of black around the edges, so we'll give that a quick sand before we add our hanging hardware at the end. We're going to lay down some moss in the resin for this first layer, and here's the moss that I picked up from Michaels. I got this a while back. They are dried, so they are safe for resin. So I will pour our mixed emerald resin into the canvas, fill it up with the moss, and then let the layer harden.
Our first layer has hardened and we have some moss sticking above the rim of our board. We're going to trim the moss that's sticking out with scissors so that way we don't have to sand and recoat at the end because of these pieces that are sticking out. For the second layer, I have the resin already mixed up. It is still clear and we're going to add some glitter to this. Not a lot where the mix is all glitter, but this glitter adds the magic for my forest pieces. So this glitter mix is from Dream of Glitters, but they no longer offer glitters for sale, so I will not be linking them in the description as they don't sell them anymore. I unfortunately do not have another glitter supplier to suggest, but you can look on Etsy for more custom mixes that are from other small businesses. That way they are more unique and really different from just um, big box stores. Now I'm done mixing in the glitter with my clear resin. I will spread it around to make sure that there's a bit of glitter everywhere. The moss is currently a bumpy surface, so I need to manually get the glitters in some spots. I have some of these dried flowers that we are going to add to the bottom of our forest and this really makes it more of a magical garden forest kind of thing but it adds a pop of color as opposed to just all green from the moss and it's really really pretty. The final touches to this piece are these paper butterflies from Moth & Myth. They're made to be resin safe so I don't need to seal them or anything. I am folding the butterflies a bit to make it look like they're flying and I make sure that there's some resin connecting the butterfly and the piece itself so it'll cure in place and not flow up in the next layers. I will have these butterflies linked in the description if you want to use them in your own work as well.
The second layer has hardened and the piece looks just the same as we left it. Now for the next two layers, we are just going to fill up the piece with clear resin to fully cover the forest design. The Totable High Performance Resin that we are using for this project pours up to a quarter inch deep per layer. So that's why this project is split into four layers. The depth of this canvas is about one inch. If we pour deeper, we risk the resin flash curing and that will affect how the piece cures. Every brand of resin is different and every type of resin is different. So read the instructions that comes with your specific resin to figure out if it's good for this project. If you're not sure, you can always try out Totable's high performance resin that we're using here and follow along. I will link the resin in the description and if you purchase through my link, you will get a discount at the checkout. So be sure to check it out. Right now in the video, I am taking the mixing stick and I'm going around the sides and pressing around to get any hidden bubbles and bringing them up to the surface to be popped by the heat gun. Final layer now and we are repeating what we did in the previous layer, just clear resin to fill the canvas. It won't be fully to the top but just near so it will look like the forest design is in a frame as if there was a glass piece over it. And we are using the same resin, Totobolt's high performance resin. During the pour, some resin drips got onto the sides, so we're going to sand that down and actually repaint the edges with acrylic paint and a paintbrush. For the sanding, I am using a sanding block and I believe 400 grit sandpaper. I am going to carefully sand the areas where the drips are. I have a wet paper towel here to clean up the sanding residue. Be careful when you're cleaning up any of the residue that falls inside the piece itself because you don't want it scratching the resin. Now we're just going to give the back a little bit of sanding because the spray paint sort of got under the board when we were spray painting it. Sanding it is just to clean it up a little bit. For painting the rim, I am using this fancy black from Arteza. It's an iridescent paint and this paintbrush is from a value pack from Michaels. I thought about resining the rim in the beginning, but then I decided not to because I don't want the piece to be shiny all around. I think having the contrast between the painted frame and shiny resin is much better. I also chose a lighter color paint for this, a lighter black, because I felt like the black spray paint that we used made the piece a little bit too dark. Some of the paint got into the f resin forest, so I am using a wet paper towel to clean up the paint before it dries. If the paint dries, I might have to scratch the paint off, which may end up scratching the piece. And to get into the tight corners, I just used a sharp tool to poke the paper towel into the corners.
I had let the paint dry for a couple of hours so we can put this piece facing down to add the hanging hardware. We are going to drill in sawtooth hangers to this canvas. The sawtooth hangers I got from Amazon and it came with these screws I believe. I'm drilling the screws in with my Black & Decker drill and matching drill bit. Be sure to double check and make sure you have the correct orientation for this before drilling. I decided to grab a ruler to measure my location just to get it in the middle and then I realized afterwards that I had measured wrong and it's not in the middle but yeah I can always unscrew move the hardware and screw again I'm keeping this clip in this video just to show you how I attach the hardware Alright, we're done and it looks good from the back. We'll flip it to see if it drilled through and it didn't so we're good in the front as well and we're ready to show it off. Now we're outside ready to show off this piece. It's a bit hard to see because of the glare but at the right angles and when we bring this piece close up it's so magical. You can see the colors of the moss, the textures, and all the depth in this forest. The sparkles from the glitters, the real flowers adding a touch of color, and the very pretty realistic looking butterflies. In a moment, the sun will shine and it'll be even better. Now we're out showing this in the sun and this is all natural sunlight, no edit or filters on this video. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed making this forest piece with me. I know I had a lot of fun creating it. And next week we'll be using the larger wood board to create an ocean piece. Before we go, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out elephant.com for any of my artworks. I'll see you next time.